Let's see, are we live? Are we live? There we go. Oh, it says I'm live. Hello, everybody. Let me know if you're there. Grant fell asleep. <laughs> no, I'm here. Um, hopefully, uh, I'm on time. Half five. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Gabbit Media. Uh, so today, I'm hoping to talk a bit about uh, lighting. Let me know, first of all, if my sound is working okay, and if you can hear me. There seems to be quite a delay, really. So ah, there we go, they're all popping in now. So it takes a bit of a time uh, to see what's going on. Uh, but hopefully, yep, hello. Getting a few haze and stuff. Hello, Amir Karim, Jorg Z, and and uh, Santokyo. <laughs> very good sound, excellent, thank you very much, Jorg Z. <laughs> is that Jorg, is that how you pronounce it? I've, uh, I don't know what the um, the two dots over the O. I don't even know how you uh, what that's called even. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, but nice to see you all uh, with me. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, so I was hoping to do a bit about lighting, carrying on from uh, the last session where I was doing some sculpting, um, and I've been doing a few tests. I could talk about topology. Kind of don't want to. It's one of those things that uh, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> I don't know. There's probably people out there who absolutely love it, but I'm not one of them. Uh, and I feel like I'm not qualified uh, in some way to talk about topology, even though I've been doing it for ages, uh, but I still get it wrong from time to time, from time to time, all the time. Uh, so there we go. Uh, hello, everybody. Feels like we're in class. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, that's probably because I'm a teacher and uh, I try not to uh, be a teacher when I'm on here and be a bit more personable, uh, but I can't help it. Old habits die hard, as they say. Uh, hello, Victor. Victor Van. Um, uh, it's hard to pronounce when you're not German. Yep, uh, I can imagine. So, uh, where where's everybody from? Uh, can confirm he is a teacher. Uh, so, are you one of my students? It's best that I don't know <laughs> if you are one of my students. Oh, good. Good to hear that you're enjoying the beginner exercises. Uh, Nathan Joseph. Uh, just say so you do amazing work. Thank you very much. That's very kind. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, good day, teacher. Um, I like the fact that um, th this is uh, the, the bit that I enjoy is chatting to people on here. This is basically my Friday night entertainment is going online and uh, doing exciting things like this. I'm a bit earlier today than I was last week. I feel like this might help with any internet crashes. I had an engineer around to figure out what was going on and they said, there's nothing you can do about it because our network in this area is made of aluminium instead of copper. And that's bad, apparently. So annoying. Anyway, um, hello, hello, everybody. Just uh, seeing who's about. Uh, Blender 2.79 abandoned. It's not abandoned as such, but uh, by most, I think they have moved on, yes. Uh, hello, Scooter's Workbench. Uh, you just found me two weeks ago, uh, and your videos have, uh, my videos have changed your workflow. That's great to hear. Um, I hope in a good way, obviously, <laughs> Scooter's Workbench. Uh, I'm going to pause just uh, for a moment before getting into things, uh, just in case there's a few uh, who, who are going to join us and just chat for a little bit and then talk a bit about lighting and maybe a bit about topology, depending on how far we go. A bit of a shorter one today uh, because, um, uh, well, my wife my wife wants to spend the evening with me, so uh, I've, I've got a maximum of an hour, I say, at the moment, but we'll see how we get on. <laughs> Uh, how to make uh, fast and easy grass tutorial. Oh, I have a tutorial on that, uh, fairly recent as well. It's in my, uh, where I was doing a stencil and doing a, uh, a what do you call it, not a beam, a post, a wooden post. So if you look through my pr uh, most recent videos, you should find one. Hello from Poland. Yeah, let me know where you are from, people. It's always nice to know. Uh, not sure what that means. Be people not uh, writing in English, so it's hard for me to interpret. Uh, Good to hear that I'm on point with my tutorials. Thank you, Monkey D. Harun. Uh, <laughs> uh, not too much talking. Uh, well, I'm surprised you come here because I just talk and talk and talk. <laughs> uh, 69 people watching. Oh, they love it, don't they? <laughs> uh, <laughs> just seeing where people are from. Belgium, Germany, uh, Serbia. Ah, the one in Serbia. That's, that's uh, unusual. Grant teaches PE in a primary school, by the way. I'm not so sure about that. I teach games design in a sixth form center. I did used to teach PE, actually, for a little while, for about, uh, I think maybe a couple of months. I was covering someone who had an injury, so I was teaching PE. 
Um, and what I found very difficult was girls netball, year eight netball. Uh, that was, I uh, didn't quite know the rules, so it was quite a tough one. Anyway, that is really but dull. Okay, so uh, let's start um, having a chat about lighting. So uh, what I need to do is slightly different. Uh, people are giving me some advice. Ah, oh, Plymouth, there we go, Nottinghamshire. So there's a few. <laughs> Greetings from Ipswich. <laughs> um, North Korea, I doubt it. <laughs> Kim Jong. Oh, dear me. I've got the memes on there already. Um, uh, what I was going to do, yes, um, so... Uh, I'm going to do a bit of work, talk through a few things, and then come to the questions and not get distracted. But I'll find that very difficult, I think. But that's what I've been advised to do, is to um, sort of work on things for a bit and then go across the questions after a little while. Um, because I was uh, spending too long chatting uh, last time. Uh, but maybe when people start getting used to me, they'll just, who knows, uh, get used to it. Uh, oh, Argentina. So there's, there's quite a lot of different places. It's lovely. I do love that. The fact that there's just so many people from so many different places. It's uh, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, India. Uh, and uh, somewhere in the woods. Brilliant. Uh, thank you for calling me a legend and saying I'm awesome. That's lovely. It makes me want to do this all the time. I feel like uh, I'm special. <laughs> so that's, I think that's why I come on here. Just so I can feel special and get these nice comments. Um, yes, so uh, put, type your questions in. Uh, Perev. <coughs> oh dear. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> oh dear, excuse me. Perev from Armenia. That's an interesting one. <coughs> Just wonder if undo and redo are reset when you append an object into a scene. I've no idea. I've no idea on that one. That's a that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, Portugal. Do you use any other 3D software? Not really, actually. Um, it's it's pretty much just Blender. I mean, uh, Unity for some games design stuff. Um, I looking into Substance Painter, but I keep looking. Into, I've been looking into Substance Painter for the last four years or something. I think it, no, three years perhaps. Um, and I do want to learn more about it. It's not something I want to use because I want to be like. Uh, the the king of free software rather than um all, i don't know I just, it's it, the fact that it's a uh, subscription based um i don't really want to do tutorials on something that costs money i want to be able to show people what they can do uh without any restrictions uh you did some movies i've done some stuff for intros for movies but uh i haven't done any movies as yet that's something i'd like to do i maybe want to do in the future a community based movie or maybe a community-based game where we all get together and do different parts and then <coughs> oh, it's not helping is it? uh and then uh, bring it all together with some clever programmers and i don't know it'd just be fun wouldn't it yeah, but we'll see how we go and then sort of document the whole thing on youtube uh, i have grand plans but i just have no time i say that i do have time for watching game of thrones at the moment that's what i'm watching at the moment i did watch it a while ago but didn't get to all the end, so I'm sort of catching up again and doing that. So, uh, <laughs> uh, how's Atlas Empires going? Um, while I was in the US Air Force, I was stationed in Bedfordshire. Oh, lovely country, yes. Yeah, it's nice, Bedfordshire. Uh, Atlas Empires going well. I'm almost finished, I think, on my section of the stuff, and it is supposed to be released in February, so they must be. Uh, it must be crunch time for those guys. Uh, <laughs> and I'm still doing. I've just uh, finished the whole environment where all the models go in. Uh, which I'll do a video on soon. Glasgow, nice to see you. Uh, Nambu Tang, <laughs> it's not a very Glaswegian name. Like your ray gun tutorial, good. I want to do more hard surface uh, videos in the future, so I will be um, doing more of that, especially with the uh, the lesson things that I'm doing at the moment, the exercises. I want that to sort of build into hard surface modeling at some point. Uh, so yeah, thank you for all this support, this is lovely. South Africa. Uh, yeah, collaboration with the community. That's right, Spring Bonnie. Um, a huge sort of collaboration of uh, community people. And uh, so they, I don't know, build a monster or a house or something and we all put it together into this monstrosity of a game. Would be quite fun. It'd be, it'd be interesting, I think. Uh, I think you'll better don't watch the end of Game of Thrones. Oh, is it bad, is it? That's a shame. I suppose that's why no one talks about it anymore. <laughs> is it bad? Shame. Uh, would you perhaps consider uploading the first part of the sculpting live stream? It is on. It is online. Yeah. It seems that the stream cut off resumed at the very beginning. 
shouldn't do. I'll, I'll have a look at my videos and see what's going on. Uh, but unfortunately, that, I think that's all I've got because I don't record these. YouTube records them. So if I've lost that, uh, then I may have lost it all, unfortunately. Um, and... I <laughs> uh, love how you much can you connect with the community uh, is actually amazing. Yeah, that's that's what I really enjoy. That's why I still haven't got on with uh, talking about what I'm doing today. <laughs> because this is great fun, just chatting away like this. Um, but I will, I will move on. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so uh, lighting. Now, the reason why I want to talk about lighting is because um, I saw this uh, very interesting article on Board Panda. I don't really know if it was Board Panda that came up with it. Um, because I get the impression that Board Panda, they, I, where I heard about them was uh, just on Instagram. They often do sort of um, articles and things and memes mainly, which are quite funny. And uh, that's what Instagram is for me. It's either 3D art or funny stuff, uh, funny memes, usually animal things. I quite like dog things when they're silly. Uh, but this one I thought was really cool, this article. And it is, uh, what's the title? After realizing that people don't understand what his job means, a lighting artist shows examples of his work. Now, actually, who is the lighting, lighting artist? Uh, that's the article writer, isn't it? Ah, oh, I can't remember who it is now. Um, it, it does say, ah, uh, Dan O'Brien, there we go, uh, shared an eye-opening Twitter thread. Uh, that's, I think that's where I saw it first, actually, the, um, on the Twitter thread, on the, on the, Twitter thread. It's tricky to say that. Uh, anyway, so uh, tell me if you've come across this before. Hello from Sweden. Uh, oh, can, can Blender be combined with Java programs? Uh, I don't know much about the coding, I'm afraid. Uh, there's quite a lot of people who are really into the coding. I've talked to uh, people like um, Curtis Holt, for example. He's quite into the coding stuff, so he might know a bit more about that than, than me, certainly. Um, so yeah, uh, have a chat to him. I, I do believe, uh, I'm hoping, uh, I, I hope it's okay for me to say it as well, but uh, we're, we're going to, I've got together, uh, a few of us, I should say, I've got together, a few of us have got together, there's some Blender tutorial people, um, so Ducky um, 3D, for example, and Curtis Holt and others, um, uh, um, CG Matter, yeah, there's CG Matter, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, and we're hoping to do a podcast. Uh, so together, which would be interesting and fun. Uh, we're hoping to record it on Sunday, but I don't know how long it's going to take um, to reach uh, you guys. But that, that might be nice. Hopefully that was okay for me to say that as well, <laughs> because it might be a big secret, uh, but I've just blurted it out. Anyway, on to this artist. Uh, so you can see the sort of before frames. Can I actually make these bigger? No, I can't. Uh, hopefully you can all see that. Uh, it looks like you can on my screen anyway. So you can see the before frames and the after frames and the after frames are exceptional. They are absolutely um, amazing. Uh, and with some of them, you look at the before frames and you think, actually, do you know, I think a lot of us, uh, perhaps, well, uh, we can sort of aspire to be this level. We can think, oh, that's not that far away from me. But then when they do the lighting stuff, it is absolutely amazing and incredible. Uh, so um, it, I think uh, this is something that's uh, glossed over a lot with tutorials and things. Uh, I do it quite a lot, actually, because I do a tutorial and then I uh, render the model and then I think, right, I make, make the thumbnail now and do lots of different things to make it look nice. And I don't really do a tutorial on that. So um, I, don't, I, I can't stress enough the importance of the way you show your models off. And also my students, actually, uh, they do a great model, but then they just go blop and render it uh, with all the sort of default settings. And it's a bit dull. It's qu often quite dark, isn't it? When you render something from Blender, it's always got this sort of gray background. It's very dark. So uh, lighting is something I want to talk about and how we can improve our lighting. I mean, look at this guy, this uh, uh, Dan O'Brien, just uh, absolutely fantastic. Again, th these scenes sort of look like something that, um, well, it, th that I could produce. Um, and then that, you suddenly think, oh, now that's a bit tougher, isn't it? So that's a lighting artist for you. Uh, so we're going to talk about lighting today in our uh, with our the man that we sculpted last time. Let's have a quick look at the stream again. There's lots of people saying stuff, so let's go across and see what people are saying. Um, when I'm cutting with my knife and extruding a plane for a low poly game, and when I import my finished model to Unity, it glitches so bad, I don't know why. It's probably doubles, usually remove doubles. That's often the case. So if you're cutting up things with a knife or extruding planes out, uh, you probably press extrude 
pressed enter and it's got loads of extra face in there. So try and remove doubles. Uh, also, if it's got engons in it, uh, it might uh, calculate the triangles in a different way. Uh, so triangulate your mesh to make sure that's exactly what it's going to look like. Control T in edit mode. So go to edit mode, select all, control T, and that's exactly what it will look like in Unity then when you export it. Uh, Soul Skinner, I recognize the name. <laughs> uh, uh, let's just have a look through. How can we combine After Effects and Blender? Yep, uh, it's uh, it's fairly straightforward, really. You just um, like, uh, can you see my scene in the background here? You just export your models with a um, transparent background and then uh, what's called layering of plates, uh, so which is just layers. But they call them plates because that's the old system. They had plates that went behind each other that were slightly transparent. Uh, so uh, you'd have, let's say this person could be, uh, I don't know, in some sort of apocalyptic uh, war scene. Uh, because I put a bearer on him now, as you can just see there. Uh, well, actually, yeah, of course, um, you can see it on the camera, but you can see the whole thing, can't you? Do you see my screen? Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's, and then it's layered up. So there might be a, uh, a building scene in the background, and then there might be a smoke layer in front of that, and maybe some explosions going off. And that's how you uh, can use Blender with After Effects, and you just export it as um, uh, P Alfred PNGs. Uh, there's a more complex workflow than that, where you can have sort of Z passes, depth passes. Are they called Z passes or depth passes? I think they're different for different programs, um, uh, and that's a bit more complicated. Uh, one of my ex students did a really good video on that, and he knows more about it than I do because he's gone into the industry and he's using Houdini and Nuke and things. Alfie Vaughan, if you look at his channel, uh, I think he's got a specific video about how you can take your uh, footage. Uh, rendered footage from Blender to After Effects because he's still quite keen on Blender and using Blender in his workflow. Alfie Vaughan, his name is. Uh, hopefully he doesn't mind me saying that. Uh, I'm sure he won't. I'm sure he'd uh, enjoy the exposure. Uh, can, so After Effects, just having a look through the stream and see what people are saying. Um, ah, that's why. Uh, because, yeah, Soul Skinner, uh, you are in Hella from the Discord. Yeah, They're nice to see you again. Uh, hello, Jane. Uh, do I know you, Jane? Because I know a Jane, but I'm not sure if the same Jane that I know. <laughs> uh, nice to see you all here. Uh, uh, yeah, depth is Z. Um, so Z pass, which is the depth pass. <laughs> uh, and that's uh, very useful because uh, then you can put it into programs as sort of a 3D object. So certainly things like uh, Houdini, which is... Um, yeah, I, I want to do a video on that, but Blender versus Houdini, and we're, it's nowhere near Houdini level. Um, from what I hear, and I've not actually used Houdini, I've just sort of seen people using it uh, and seen tutorials, and it just it seems to blow Blender out of the water uh, when it comes to um, effects, visual effects and things like that. Smoke, fire, water, and all those sort of things. Although uh, that's being worked on, isn't it? Um, there's um, some cool stuff. Uh, Manta Flow or something is it? I think the branch of Blender where they're doing all those sort of things. So that's cool. Okay, so um, a quick unrelated question. Go on then, uh, Varun Agrawal. Um, are you self-taught or you went to art school? And what was your first job? Lots of love from India. Uh, I am self-taught in the game design um, field. I did a media studies degree. It was more film. I took the film modules, but we didn't have a film. Uh, degree where I was, I was and I needed to go to a local college for finances and things uh, so um, I did media studies and then uh, started a small uh, company with my friends where we were making uh, films we were doing corporate videos basically so filming conferences doing the small adverts for people we got some really good contracts we got one for Starbucks I did one for Sainsbury's I worked for the um, BT so British Telecom and I did a project for the BBC back then as well. Uh, it was sort of indirectly for a company, then went on the BBC. But I never actually saw it on the BBC, but apparently it was. Um, so got loads of cool jobs, but then it wasn't really enough to get by. And I went into teaching. And, uh, and now I'm slowly getting back uh, into this sort of 3D animation stuff again. Uh, so that's my background. So it is very self-taught. Probably not the best way to go because there's probably workflows that... Um, well, there's certainly workflows that took me a long time to understand because I wasn't doing them the right way. Uh, but I think it's better now for a self-taught artist. I had to get a VHS video of how to make uh, a car at one point. So I had to order it, come in the post, because there wasn't even DVDs then. Uh, so, so it was very difficult. 3D Buzz was the first person that I remember thinking, wow, 
online resources. Not a lot of them were free, but there were some free stuff, which I thought, well, amazing. Um, but they're, they're, they've now died as a, um, a company, as it were, which is a real shame. But you can get all their resources online, 3D Buzz, uh, mainly Maya and Max, I think, uh, their resources. Okay, so let's talk about lighting. Uh, I think I've gone through that. Yep, uh, dynamic visual effects, that's it. Um, thank you, uh, Soul Skinner, Inhaler. <laughs> right, so um, I'll just come out of camera mode here. In fact, do I need to come out of camera mode? No, I don't. Uh, I just uh, pressed zero whilst I wasn't in Blend. I'm just checking it's still streaming. Yeah, so um, you can see my camera setup, and now this is with the lighting, so I'm doing some, or trying to do some interesting, fun stuff with lighting. Uh, and uh, backlights, that's what you always need to remember uh, when you're thinking about film lighting is backlights, that's, that's key. Uh, I've got a video about how to make a music video uh, and I talk about uh, lighting that's in shot um, which is called, they're called practical lights generally and uh, backlighting and they use it all the time in music videos and that's why music videos always look really cool and I'm trying to teach my students uh, you need to make your footage look cool but um, it's all about lighting, cinematography all about lighting it's very little what you do with the camera and the camera rules are quite simplistic really but lighting that's where it's at um, so have fun with lighting and experiment so if I turn off the lights I've got all my lights in this cam and lights layer so I turn that off it, oh that, that should be moved to the layer <laughs> uh, cam lights there we go uh, I thought I had oh, obviously I don't and let's get a world in fact let's go to uh, there we go that's a better idea, isn't it? Uh, don't turn off my lights, just go to Eevee, that's what I was, um, not Eevee, look dev mode, that's what I'm trying to say. So look dev is um, Eevee without any lighting information, that's why it can run really fast. Uh, so um, if I go, uh, so you can see that the model itself doesn't really look that great. I'll just uh, show you the shaders really quickly. So the object, and let's click on him. Uh, I did put a tiny bit of a bump in there, so let's uh, come out of camera mode and I'll zoom into the model, so you can sort of see roughly what it looks like. This is where we got to last time. And I do want to go through about um, using different brushes, so detail brushes like skins, pour, pour brushes, pores, brushes? <laughs> um, and uh, getting more detail onto your models at a later date. You can see my beret, it's a little bit um, out in places. <laughs> it doesn't quite fit his head, but I couldn't really be bothered to work too hard on that. I might talk about that in a second when I talk about topology, depending on how much uh, time we have. Uh, I'll just quickly check the, ta the chat. Um, backlighting is key indeed. Uh, it is the most important because there's a term called key light. <laughs> is that what you're getting, I think, Tom? <laughs> um, uh, Blender got, Guru got a cheat sheet for you. Uh, yes, yeah, so there's cheat sheets and things. I think um, Zacharias Reinhardt is hoping to do a sort of bigger cheat sheet for uh, 2.8. So um, obviously, if you haven't heard of his channel, then certainly look across there. He's got some great stuff. Um, anyway, so you can see this is really flat looking and that's what, um, and it's an HDRI, so that's actually better lighting than sometimes you see in um, what in my, some of my students' scenes. Uh, and it just doesn't show the model off at all. It's really dreadful, really flat as we call. It's not got a lot of depth. I have actually got an ambient occlusion um, overlay on there. So you can see, oh actually this is the pointiness. There's the ambient occlusion. The pointiness won't work in Eevee, but it's, uh, it does work in cycles. Uh, I'll talk about that another time, the pointiest, pointiness no, but it's a really good one for cavity masks and things. Do check my videos on cavity masks and baking. It's in the baking section. Anyway, uh, So uh, you can see it's really flat, but when we start adding the lights, as you can see, suddenly we've got some interest and uh, more stuff going on. Let's go to camera view. That's the angle that I was using. Uh, so yes, I am using a three-point lighting system. I noticed someone saying that. That's Astrobat81. Um, Pixel textures. Oh, maybe I'll do something on pixel textures at some point. That's an interesting one. Um, I'm just having a quick look at the chat. Uh, yeah, now um, that is an interesting question from Dr. Fine Mind. Um, exporting us to game engines. Um, the X FBX export seems to be glitchy still in 2.81. Not that I've done it recently, so I don't know for definite. Um, I've been exporting, I suppose that's certainly with animations, isn't it? Is that what you're asking? In fact, you haven't said animation, so it seems fine without animations, but uh, lots of people are asking me, can you do a video on animations? But I haven't done it recently to test it out, so um, maybe uh, that will have to come up in the future, but I need to check that it's working. Last year I did what was called animation, so the month of May uh, I did a sort of um, animation uh, challenge, 
I went through doing different animations. It, if I get time again, I'll do that. And hopefully I'll be able to take more of an in-depth look at things like FBX export with animations and stuff, which is something I don't know a lot about, to be honest, and it's something I'd like to uh, understand more. Okay, so uh, lighting. Uh, yeah, so uh, so let's have a look at my lighting system. And you can see always uh, top view is always the easiest way. So if I press 7 on my numpad, I suppose I ought to have the screencast keys on. Uh, that might help. These are from JNM. Uh, so he's uh, produced these screencast keys. Uh, oh, do remind me if I'm in the way of anything as well. I always forget that on my screen, I'm taking up a huge chunk of it with my face. <laughs> I can always get rid of that, I suppose. Um, what should be the angle of lights? Now, that's an interesting question. There's, uh, there's quite a few things with lighting. There's color of your lights, there's angle of your lights, and there's position of your lights. And there's temperature of lights as well, which is sort of uh, to do with color, really. Um, so we'll just call that color for now to simplify things. So those three things are the main things that you need to think about. Uh, uh, no, the uh, stream uh, wasn't meant to start at 10. I think uh, GMT, so uh, half five GMT. Hopefully I, I didn't confuse people. Sorry about that. Unleashed 75. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so um, those three things. So let's talk about uh, direction first. So um, uh, actually talk about position first, because that's the first thing you need to think about. So um, I suppose what I need to do is relight this scene. I'll hide all these, cam and lights, and I'll do some new ones. And that's a good place to start, is where the background is just completely blank. Uh, so uh, there's, if we look at my world, I have got some stuff going on, but it's actually, that's just for reflections, don't worry about that. But generally it's on a strength point, uh, point, uh, why can I not say point one? <laughs> My brain just went really bad then. Um, I'll just show you that. Okay, uh, so uh, let's put that on zero, in fact. Okay, so we've got no light in our scene whatsoever, and that's a great place to start. Okay, so the first light you usually put in, and this sort of the photographer's setup, this is the three-point lighting system. I think Blender Guru has mentioned this in a, in fact, yeah, he did a lighting series, didn't he? And he probably, I, I haven't seen it at all, but I've seen lots of different things about photography lighting and film lighting, um, but I'm pretty sure he would have said this. So shift right click, shift A to add, and let's add a light. The easiest thing to do is just choose a sun. Okay, for now we'll just stick with the sun. And that offers a uniform light from the direction that it's going. Uh, is this the old cowboy? It's the old tank uh, commander, actually. We changed our mind halfway through. And someone said, oh, it's a tank commander. And I thought, oh yeah, it's gotta be tank commander. There he is. Uh, so uh, already it looks kind of interesting, okay? Not, not great, obviously. Let's just uh, bring up the lighting tab over here. And uh, just quickly check if anybody's saying anything interesting. Of course, everybody's saying uh, loads of interesting stuff, but uh, uh, <laughs> anything, any important questions. Uh, so that's straight down. And generally speaking, uh, if you're lighting for a natural look, um, and that's, in fact, let's not go into that, but for a natural look, you're lighting from above. In fact, I've got lights on at the moment because my, mainly because my webcam is really bad, but they're all uh, they're up there and up there. So it's casting down and that's why I look so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you're a funny guy. Um, but uh, that offers natural lighting. So uh, I suppose I could take, yeah, no, I won't. But uh, in fact, I can do it on here, can't I? Uh, so uh, unnatural lighting is up lighting. So if I position this, or in fact, I rotate it and point it upwards, can you see now it looks a bit horror-esque? Okay, so that gives us a horror feel. And it looks quite, um, quite interesting, doesn't it? He's still got that beautiful strong nose indeed, yes. I did squash it a bit because usually sort of army people, they, they um, or tough army people, they've been in lots of fights and they've had their nose bashed in at the front there. Um, uh, I'll, I'll quickly answer that question from Madness Gamer. He's asked it a couple of times now. Uh, does SL, SCL degree needed for game developers and be a programmer because I hate effing our school? I mean, SCL, school degrees. No, you don't need a degree, uh, it's all portfolio, but in programming, I'm imagining it's quite a tough one to know what the workflows are. Um, in fact, I, I don't know, to be honest, but I'm, from what I've uh, gleaned from people that talked about it, um, it, you do not need a degree at all to get into this industry in any way. Uh, but what does help is a kick-ass portfolio, or kick-ass, if you're American, uh, portfolio and uh, showing people that you can really do this stuff. So here's my work, here's what I can do. Uh, so that's the most important thing. 
Um, so if you hate school, uh, then uh, you don't need to go to school. But uh, why do you hate school is the question uh, I would ask as well. Uh, because if it's about people being critical of your work, that's something that you need to be uh, good at taking criticism. That's one of the most important things in the industry is being able to improve by taking criticism. Anyway, I, I don't know if I've completely answered your question, but I'm going to move on because we're, we're on to uh, lighting. Uh, okay, good lighting, make uh, 3D models look uh, uh, 10,000 million times better, <laughs> whatever that is. Indeed, yep. Uh, and this, this still isn't great at the moment. So we've got this horrible up lighting at the moment, which uh, can you see the direction of my lights over here? I'll bring this a little bit closer and I can zoom in a bit more and I'll get rid of the uh, screencast keys. And that thing as well. Okay, so it's it's pointing upwards. Let's let's see what sort of effects we can get. So this is looking more and more sinister the more we go up. So what what it's doing, as they say, is inverting the shadows. So we've got shadows at the bottom here instead of underneath here. So that's the natural look, and this is the unnatural look. Hence why they use loads of sort of ground-based lights if you see a horror film. Uh, so looking out for that sort of horror lighting. Next is the color of light. So let's change the color. In fact, I suppose we can put the intensity up to about two. And it's, it's obviously, um, one is uh, it's sort of default, but um, it just never seems quite enough. Uh, so two is better in this case. Uh, let's change it to sort of horror lighting. So we've got orangey and reds, often used in horror. Sometimes it actually you get sort of green look. It's more sort of sci-fi. Uh, sci-fi is across here, science fiction. So a sci-fi horror maybe across to the greens, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, romantic, but you would never use uplighting, goes towards the sort of pinky tones and sometimes uh, a little bit of yellow. Uh, so color there, a little bit of color. Uh, what if the soldier is in the middle of a war zone, fire, smoke, etc.? How would you light it? I'll come on to that indeed. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, there's a bit of horror lighting, okay? So I'm not gonna give, uh, well, shall we give him some horror lighting? Yes, let's keep that light in. Uh, and I'm going to put, move that onto a new collection called Horror. It's uh, not necessarily horror lighting, but certainly dramatic lighting. Um, okay, so, and then uh, I'll hide that one, just so uh, we know that's in the horror. Okay, now I'm going to set it up just for general flat, um, just looking okay lighting. So it's, uh, let's say, things like sitcoms, they have what's called high key lighting. So uh, the term comes from uh, sets where they just have loads of key lights on the ceiling, high key lighting, hence uh, there's the idea. Uh, so let's add in, shift A to add, and light, and then sun. So we've got another sun, where's it gone? It was all the way over there, there's my cursor, let's move it back over there. And move it across, so uh, generally it's sort of angled inwards. So there's uh, some our key light, and we've got a nice um, sort of strong key light, so that's generally one of your brightest lights, so let's have that at three. Uh, so we've got a nice bright key light. Uh, generally lights aren't white as well. Uh, you give them a bit of a temperature and generally a, a sort of warmish temperature. Uh, so coming across to the yellows. You can, there's nodes you can set up. Uh, I think it's only in cycles. It might be an EV, I'm not sure. No, I don't think it is. Uh, but there's a temperature thing and the name escapes me. Someone tell me what that name is for the Kelvin things. Ah, uh, for lights anyway. Um, uh, where are we? Uh, just seeing how everybody is. Yep. Uh, so uh, the next light, so that's the key light, the strongest light, generally generally speaking. Uh, Shift D, and I'll duplicate that, and I'll rotate that round and point it back at our subject. And this is going to be our fill light. Now the fill light, let's make it sure it's pointing downwards. So again, they're up high. <laughs> let's put my hand in shot. They're up high. So we've got a fill light there. This one is going to be a lot softer. So let's have it 0.5 to start with. Quite a lot of shadow there. So let's go up to one. That's a bit better. So we've got a lot of shadow still from our key light, and that's the main light, so we've got one shadow going this way. Generally speaking, you don't want it the same, so if I put this three, uh, it sort of destroys the shadows from our, um, our key light, which is over here. I should probably label these. Shall I label them? Yeah, go on, key. And then we've got uh, this one, is the fill. Ah, mouse went weird. Fill light, and yeah, like I say, uh, you don't want it too strong, so about one. And now that's not looking too bad. It's got some depth because it's got the shadows. Um, but the one thing, uh, yeah, what is the power? That's a good point. Uh, so in terms of 
well, I suppose that's a bit naughty using suns, really, but there's just a strength with suns. But um, we could use proper lights and have a wattage, and then that would be a bit more um, specific. Uh, uh, area lights would probably suit this part. That's a good point, Unleashed 75. I'm just trying to make it really simple so we don't think about uh, the area that's covered and the inverse square rule and all those sort of things, which can get a bit... Uh, just a bit confusing and it's not particularly necessary. I'll come on to a few other lights uh, later. Uh, lights are measured in lumens, that's right Mads, uh, but uh, there's a, is it is it the power? There's, there's a special node, I'm trying to think of the node and I can't remember what it is. It's gonna come to me soon uh, and it's annoying. I've got a black something, black, uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, otherwise I'll, um, uh, anyway, yeah, uh, temperature is measured. The temperature of light is measured in kelvins, and that's what it's sort of measured. But it's a special node that does that exactly. Anyway, so key light and fill light. The other light is a backlight, and I'm going to uh, duplicate one of these. So Shift D to duplicate and point it at my subject. Uh, generally, that can actually be a, sometimes a tiny bit lower. Uh, let's just uh, move that up though, so it is the same as the other ones in this case. But it can be a tiny bit lower. It doesn't matter too much. Now I want to show you what that does, so I'm going to hide these two. So grab those, those, hide them. And can you see that tiny bit of a rim? Often the backlight's quite strong. Okay, so I've put it up to six there. In fact, no I haven't, I've put one of the other lights up to six, so let's undo that. <laughs> Click on that one. Uh, let's put it up to five. Okay, so you can see it's just this tiny rim that you get around there. And off, sometimes it's called the rim light actually. Uh, or the highlights. Uh, it's really good if you've got blonde hair and in, you're in a music video, you get this sort of glow around you, it looks amazing. If you've got short hair, you just get really red ears. <laughs> so it doesn't look quite as good. Uh, but um, uh, it's something that's worth uh, messing with a lot and having fun with. Black body uh, zero thing, that's the one. Thank you, Soul Skinner. <laughs> I've just seen someone there. Oh, Dan, and yeah, sorry, the few of you are saying black body, well done. Uh, Dasha Salo uh, is the one who came up with it first, indeed. Well done. And Giovanni Louis, is that, I think, is that how you pronounce it? Uh, rim light and hair light, indeed, Dan. Yes, uh, someone who understands the lighting. Good, good to, good to know there's someone out there. So do correct me if I get any of my terms wrong. It's quite often. Uh, red ears, aka subsurface scattering. Indeed, that's what happens. You, you get that sort of red glow around your ears because of subsurface scattering, where the light enters into uh, your ear in a sense and bounces around and then it glows. Uh, that's what subsurface scattering is. So that's that node not uh, input that you have on the principled BSDF and can be very useful, uh, which is something I haven't put onto this character, which we'll maybe take a look at later. But you can see that rim light there um, or backlight or however you want to call it. So let's move that about and the angle of it and see what effect it's having. So it's having a good effect this side, but actually I quite like the thought of it having and affect that side. Can you see what it's offering us there, this backlight, if I come to there? It's looking quite interesting. What I like to do with a back backlight often is to make a nice bluey color. And it gives that impression of night, doesn't it? Up the temperature, this, oh, I said temperature, not strength. So let's go right to 20, okay? And there we got, it's, it looks dreadful from this angle, but there, it looks kind of cool. Okay, so backlighting, uh, really important light is the backlight. Uh, and so uh, with my sort of camera view, let's go to zero to get, see my camera and then we can sort of grab this light and rotate around the Z and see how much backlight we need and what angle we want it from, depending on uh, where your camera is positioned. You could obviously have it this way around and it offers quite an interesting uh, rim effect there. But it's, yes, this rim, this sort of um, halo, this um, setting you and separating you from the background. So that's quite important. Uh, okay, so how does lighting work on game assets with only a hand-painted diffuse texture? That's a very good question. Do you need normal map for hand-painted textures? No, you don't. You give um, hand-painted textures a 12 o'clock look. So uh, it's the thought that it's not really 12 o'clock, but generally speaking. Uh, so it's as if the light's pretty much above them. You could give it a bit of an angle, but uh, if you've got any uh, games where you've got lights in the scene as well, uh, then you need to keep it that 12 o'clock so you're your shadows you've drawn on because you are you're painting them on, uh, don't interfere with the lights in the scenes. So you give it a 12 o'clock look. Everything on the top is just that bit brighter than everything down below and the shadows, so uh, you'd have shadow. In fact, let's uh, move it with our character here. Let's uh, move this light. So this is, 
uh, there. Uh, you, you draw it sort of so it's got this 12 o'clock look and it's pointing right down, maybe at a very slight angle like that. So you'd have shadows under here. Um, really, you'd have a fill light as well, obviously, but but that's where you're thinking about the direction of the light. So where the shadows go in under these areas is where you draw the shadows in with your hand-drawn pieces. So yes, uh, hand-drawn is very different. Generally speaking, it's, it's a light like this and then uh, a bit in your sort of general color. So this is the sort of shadows and where they'd go. But uh, you, you, you're careful of shadows as well. You don't draw too many and do too much detail to them. Because again, if you've got a light in the scene, it can't really help you much. Uh, and generally, you don't really put a light in the scene with hand painted stuff. OK, so uh, we've got that backlight there. I'll turn this back down to zero, uh, which is looking kind of cool. Let's put that across over to this side. I'm just uh, moving around. I've got up lighting there. So let's yeah, move it down and RZ to move it in the z-axis to give it that sort of interesting look there. Okay, uh, I'll bring back my other lights now for the, um, the fill and then the key light. Okay, so this, can you see the rim light is still there, the back light, and that's helping uh, to sort of sell our image. Uh, I feel like the fill light's a bit too much, so let's bring that down about there. It's, it's kind of lost that sort of uh, dramatic feel. So uh, for my uh, end character, let's have a look at, uh, doo -doo -doo. So I'll get rid of these yep, and bring back my... So here's my lighting. I'm going to just hide this one for the moment. Okay, so here's my lighting setup. I've actually got a four lighting system. So I've got two backlights because I just thought this one... In fact, I'll hide that one. In fact, I shouldn't have done that. Yes, I can just undo that. That's fine. So I'll redo that. So um, I, I just felt it needed a bit more on the side here. So uh, if I undo that hide, then you've got that coming in there, offering a bit of, it's almost a bit sci-fi-esque at the moment, isn't it? But if we look at the strength, that's on 30, so that's quite a bright blue light. In fact, does it need to be that blue? It could be sort of purpley. Let's go for apocalyptic and go a bit red around to here. So let's say there's a fire in the background and it's burning. And generally, uh, the way they do that on film, uh, from what I've heard anyway, I've never actually done this myself, but is, uh, you put a f something like a fan in front of the light or something that's flickering and that creates a flicker of fire. So something like fans or um, I'm just trying to think, or are you waving something in front of the light if you can't find a fan? But you know, the, the blade going around very slowly, sort of just rotates really slowly and then it offers that sort of flickering effect. In fact, that's what they had in really old electric fires uh, in Britain anyway, uh, they had just sort of fans at the bottom. It looked like these really naff, there were lights and then fans and it looked like naff flames. But that's uh, that's how you can light it. Um, <clears throat> uh, hello Bluetooth. Uh, so uh, just seeing what people are saying. For hand painted, why not give it a zero lighting? Uh, so do it all in the game engine. Yes, uh, but then it, it's not got that hand painted feel. That's what PBR does. It kind of is zero lighting, it says. Um, uh, you've got your diffuse texture, which is very flat, and then you've got things like the shininess or the roughness um, and so on. So PBR textures are specifically that. They react to the environment around them. Whereas hand-painted, generally you don't really have lights in the scene. You might do, um, but uh, generally not. I mean, it, sometimes it helps just to have one light in the scene for sh the sake of a shadow in your, um, your environment. Uh, what if you see point lights inside a game? Yes, uh, they will still cast shadows. So that's, that's where hand painted is limited because as soon as you get lights in the scene like that, let's say he's in a nighttime scene and you want everything to go dark, it's quite difficult for them to react to the lighting because they haven't got that depth because they're a low poly model. So there's no depth, there's no normal maps. So that's why a lot of stylized has gone to normal maps and a hand painted look so that they can react to the scene around them. The normal maps is sort of, NPBR, isn't it? So uh, it's not quite uh, PBR, but it's uh, it's that hand painted, stylized look with PBR, so it can so you don't have to change your character look when they go from let's say a Mars level to an underwater level, which is all blue as, as opposed to red. That's the thinking anyway. Uh, hopefully everybody's having fun. Um, bar heaters with fake coals, yes indeed. Unleashed seventy five. Uh, glad to hear that you're enjoying it, Dan. Um, so yes, this so this here's my um, lighting setup at the moment. Um, when I was a kind, uh, when I was a kid, I think you meant. Um, I think uh, we had. 
this kind of um, warmer, uh, no idea how it's called, but it had artificial fire, that's exactly what I mean, and it's got that sort of flicker effect. Um, what software do big Hollywood studios use to animate CG faces with mocap? Mo I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, it'd be interesting to have some research on that. Anybody know? Then do let us know. Uh, I've just finished my first asset with your videos. Helped me a lot. Uh, I just want to say thank you for that. You are my favorite blended YouTuber. Thank you, Timo. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Okay, uh, so let's have a look at uh, this backlight now. Can we make this apocalyptic war scene um, even more so? I sh uh, this could be the night time, but should we experiment the color here? Let's turn that a bit more orangey. Uh, so it's looking like there's flames absolutely everywhere in this. So uh, you could have that. Here's my front two lights. So if I click on that one, it's only 0.1. You can hardly see it. So if I press H, it, it's not making much difference, is it? So I'll undo that. It's hardly there. Let's, um, I'll just change that to a different color this time. I'm going to go across to the green. Can you see that just a tiny bit there? I don't know whether it's coming across on YouTube, but I wanted to, uh, it's still important to have these fill lights. So there's another one there. Uh, oh, I say that it's still important to have these fill lights and that's not even on. Let's try upping that. But because I need, you need a bit of detail in here. Um, that's a common mistake that beginners make uh, when uh, they're filming. Uh, so, uh, and you're new to film, in fact, I made this mistake loads. Um, we wanted to film scenes at uh, night. Uh, I'm just sort of seeing what people are chatting about. No, that's the numbers, that's all right. Um, we wanted to film uh, this scene at night, uh, so we went out at night. But that's actually a really bad idea. Uh, what you need to do is either you have really strong lights, and then uh, you bring the whole thing down in post, uh, and you have like a really strong light that's your moonlight, and you bring it quite low, and it's blue, uh, and that that's a better way of lighting because cameras can't deal with the lack of light, and we had these really fuzzy, noisy pictures, and we we're thinking our cameras just can't cope with it, but it was actually our lights that were the problem. We needed to light our scenes better and do more experimenting uh, with lighting. Turn it blue. Is blue better, is it? Um, what are people saying? Turn a noodle bending for your nodes. Noodle bending? Oh, is this is this annoy, annoying, is it? Um, I don't worry too much about those sort of things. Uh, could you make a lighting tutorial? I have got some lighting tutorials. It's mainly for low poly work, but uh, I, I'll make one so you can, well, this, this is sort of a lighting tutorial. <laughs> but I could go into depth if you like. Um, so, uh, so looking at the color of the light, that's really important. We've looked at angle and we've looked at strength. So those are the different things uh, within lighting uh, to create that scene. Now what I also done, if I press Alt H, I think that's gonna bring back everything, isn't it? There's too many lights now, let's get rid of that one. Which ones did I do after the fact? That one, we got one of these as well. It's that one. Yeah, so we're back. Although I feel like there's a really strong light somewhere that I've added in by mistake. There's, okay, so what I've done here, I've got a spotlight and this is something that they often do uh, in um, uh, in post again. Uh, it, if if they're really inventive, uh, like I'm thinking, who's the director of Apocalypse Now? Someone tell me. I'm really bad with remembering names. Uh, my colleagues, my uh, film uh, studies colleagues, always joke about that because I'm always saying that guy who was in the film with the the other actress, you know. And uh, so it's a running joke with my colleagues. So, um, yes, the French New Wave movie, Day for Night, that, and that's what it's called. It's called uh, uh, Night for Day, where they um, film in the day and then they just make everything blue with the lights in post. That's a nice, easy way. And that's something to imp important to remember when you're lighting your scenes. If you want something to look like it's at night, don't take away the lights. Just make your lights blue, okay? Uh, so you can make them quite strong even, uh, but uh, make them blue. Uh, can we get 420 likes? I don't think so. We're only on 80 at the moment. <laughs> it seems unlikely. Uh, okay, just having a quick look. Uh, are there are the three lights setups meant to simulate Fresnel? Uh, not that I know of. Uh, Little, Wolf, Little Wolf, hello again. Um, simulate Fresnel. Oh, I see. Yeah, because it does look like a Fresnel effect, doesn't it? I hadn't thought about that. That's not... I don't. Th I think that's purely coincidental. I don't think that's uh, what they're supposed to be simulating. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't think so. It's just co coincidental. But it does look like a sort of Fresnel effect, doesn't it? And maybe you could, in fact, 
uh, set up without lights with a Fresnel emission mode. Interesting. Uh, okay, so what was I saying? Oh yes, um, so um, it, it, so I'm thinking of uh, films like Apocalypse Now where they really went to town with lighting and those people that really experiment with lighting, um, they'll use what are called flags. So they light through, um, sometimes called cookies as well. I think maybe that's what CG Cookie is named after actually. So they put a sort of a cutout, a cookie cutout, in front of the light. So light will only pass through certain areas. And then you've got sort of dappled light, bits of light on the object. So that's what I'm doing here with this, although it seems to be spilling all over the place. Why is that so bright? Is it this one? Well, that's on 50. Maybe that's a little bit too much. And I, I don't know about the yellow, shall we? Let's go back to the um, camera view there. Uh, let's just have a look at the blue again. I don't know. I feel like the blue is, it, it gives it that nighttime feel, doesn't it? That blue. We could even have two backlights over here to give the, f because we're thinking of apocalyptic. So we've got this sort of red with this light, but can we uh, angle that one down there, give it some red there, and then shift D, and then give this one a yellow. Can you see that? That looks like flames. Oh, oh yes. Oh, look at that. Having some fun now, aren't we? Look at that. Oh yes. Don't you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, starting to go stupid. That's what I tend to start doing after a while of talking to the camera. It's almost like I'm talking to myself, but I am, I'm sort of seeing you all here. It's lovely. Um, will you possibly do a future tutorial on uh, this new stylized asset workflow, Diffuse Normal Maps? Yes, uh, that's what I was doing with my Spartan Warrior, uh, but I'd like to go on and do another one of those, definitely. I've done a um, di dinosaur one, uh, that's more recent as well. It's got sort of that workflow, but uh, it's got the normal maps with hand painted techniques. So yes, I would like to do more of that because I think uh, that's, well, that's what the game industry is using a lot of. So yes, um, at a volume uh, that is only affected by the blue light uh, might give a nice effect. Hmm, that's an interesting thought. I'm not sure whether that would work or not. I'll look into that in a second. That's, uh, that could be fun. Uh, this is low poly. I'm talking about the low poly in general. Not sure. Love the low poly style. Yes. Oh, Dylan. Yes. Uh, I, I, I'm a big fan of low poly. Uh, there's a lot of skill goes into low poly that people don't realize when they first start. And it's a nice place to start. But to get things looking really cool, you need that sort of artistic skill to be able to break models down in that way. Anyway, uh, so uh, why, am, why have I got this light here? So uh, this is to simulate uh, a flag in a sense. Uh, often uh, in post, so in something like Nuke or After Effects, they sort of take the eyes and they just brighten them a bit, especially if it's at night. So you can sort of see the face and it's got that focus right on the eyes. Uh, so using a spotlight like this, oh, I'll come out of camera mode, do it over here instead. Uh, let's zoom in on that. So you can see this uh, spotlight and uh, spotlights are great because again, you've got this sort of, you can focus them like this. So I could focus this one here. I could even do be naughty and have, and this is the great thing about 3D. We can put lights in the scene where you just wouldn't be able to uh, in real life. So it's got this sort of really interesting look now. Um, I'll bring this one down. This is at 41 watts, which is quite low for a light really, but it is very close to his face. And that's what's called the inverse square law. The closer you are to the object, the brighter it is. The closer your light is, the the closer you are to the light, that's what I'm trying to say. So uh, the light seems brighter the closer it is to the object and it, uh, the more distant, so it's the inverse square or something like that, I don't know. Uh, I always try and sound smart when I say inverse square law. Let's put this on 20 and bring it across to the other eye. So it's the same angle, but it's just giving that eye a bit of uh, more of a glow. And let's bring the, uh, actually the blend, do we want the blend up? Let's have a look. More blend less size and oh maybe i'm just going to change the angle really slightly bring it into the eye got to be a bit ah that didn't work you see it's coming across the nose too much so you can see up here i want to avoid that nose and just give it a touch there right now let's turn the overlays off and go to camera mode yeah you see can you see that sort of it's giving an intensity to the eyes i might have to angle it a bit more so uh yeah so let's have a look at this oh, i'm pressing caps lock loads uh, it's off now Right, so let's angle that up a little bit. It's a tricky one because you, you still want it coming down really. but So it looks like he's got some light coming through a window somewhere. And can you see how much uh, better and more dramatic this actually looks now? Uh, it just seems much more exciting now that we've thought about lighting. 
and just experimented a bit. Um, now, obviously, I've got film knowledge there as well, so I know what I'm doing to a degree. Um, uh, but there are things to remember, really strong backlights or practical lights if you actually want them in the scene. And uh, then thinking about the colours. So I haven't got any lights that are white anymore, and that's the default, which is kind of ridiculous in a sense, isn't it? And um, giving it that sort of uh, brightness to certain areas. You can either use flags in front of lights, or sometimes it's easier just to uh, use things like spotlights to highlight certain areas. Um, okay, just have a quick look at what people are saying. Can't see his luscious lips anymore. No, uh, indeed, <laughs> it's probably a good thing. Uh, he looks like Bill from Left for Dead. I, uh, Left for Dead is a game, isn't it? I, I, or is it a film? Uh, I, I haven't played it or seen it. Uh, this way, I'm really ignorant. I don't play a lot of games, so I just don't get the time, and I find games too addictive. So <laughs> I casually keep away from games, uh, if I'm honest. Um, although I did, uh, what was it? Uh, Frank uh, from the Discord server suggested that I try Dragon's Dogma because it's an RPG and it's the sort of thing I like. But amazingly, I haven't really got in into it and I just haven't had the time. So uh, I haven't, you know, uh, got my uh, fingers into it uh, like other games, like The Witcher, for example. I did play that a lot uh, a while ago. Um, I need a quick fix for Blender. I turned my startup file. Uh, into a sculpting file. How do I fix this? I think there is a sort of factory reset sort of thing. Uh, default, file, default, load factory settings. There you go. I think uh, that's probably going to be your best way. You'll have to add all your add-ons again, which is a bit frustrating. No time for, yes indeed, Dan, no time for playing games. We've, we've, uh, we've got to take over the world and that's what we've got to do. <laughs> uh, uh, the old age and the beret, is it, uh, that's left for dead. Left 4 Dead, is that, uh, so is that game? Uh, tell me people. Uh, Left 4 Dead. Uh, I, I'm feeling a little bit embarrassed because I don't know, because I bet it's, it's probably like the Fortnite of games for us, I don't know. <laughs> and everybody knows what it is. Okay, so that's a bit of uh, lighting. So I thought I'd uh, introduce that to you. Now, um, I'm not sure, I've, I have gone the hour. I'll go a few more minutes. Uh, and uh, is there any questions from anybody? I was thinking about doing retopology today, um, but I don't think we've got enough time to cover that. Um, uh, but I, I'd like to sort of chat about it at least, but not uh, perhaps, it's a game, is it? Okay. Uh, go into uh, retopologizing the whole shape because actually my retopo isn't as skilled as it should be. Uh, and therefore I make lots of mistakes and you don't want to be seeing someone make lots of mistakes. Um, I suppose what I can show you, oh, let's save that because I like the lighting on that one. I'll, I'll save that, uh, save as. Why is it that this screen always goes on my other monitor? No matter where I move it to, it always wants to go onto my main monitor. Uh, and then I have to sort of do this all the time. Yeah. Uh, so new lighting, there we go, new lighting. Save. Okay, so uh, got a few files that I've been working on. Could you critique? I'll do another um, critique thing uh, soon. That was that was good fun the last time with some folders and critique. And I will go onto Discord, but Bluetooth, and have a look at your work. Just tag me in your work, then I'll have a look at it. That'll be great. Um, where are we? Yes, open recent. So what are they doing? Uh, topology testing. Uh, so I did. Uh, there's a couple of things I've done. So first the brushes. So you can see here that I've gone in and done some pores and things. It's not particularly detailed. To be honest, my graphics card isn't the great, uh, not my graphic, my processor isn't the greatest, so viewport display starts lagging. I'm at 2 million faces. When I go up to about, I think I can go about to 5 million, uh, so I probably could have here, but um, as you can see, you don't really need this detail if you're going to do some good, interesting lighting. Uh, so uh, if you haven't got the graphics card to do these cool uh, things with and get to 2 million polygons or whatever it is, or 6 million, I think I saw Zacharias Reinhardt doing a sculpting tutorial, and this was a few years ago, and he was on 20 million, and I thought, oh, he's got some sort of processor there. Uh, so yes, um, so I'd like to go into using these sort of brushes to get that sort of finite details in there. Uh, and the other thing that I was going to talk about, uh, like making this beret, is that I used a retopo technique, actually, and I'll uh, go across and show that open recent, where is it, topology testing, there we go. And you can see what I'm doing here. So here's the basic setup. And you can probably look at it already and think, oh, he's made lots of mistakes. But uh, <laughs> this is the sort of thing you have to do. You have to, um, first of all, you start off with a single plane. 
I suppose I could just restart that a uh, few minutes, a few minutes and do a sort of quick uh, retopo. So you start off with a plane. Let's shift uh, right click there, shift A and start with a plane. It's important to retopologize. I suppose I ought to say that um, because uh, all that information, so 2 million polygons is not good enough for film or game. Uh, and it's just even slow in your viewport. So we need to retopologize this and take the detailed information as a normal map and bake it onto our low poly object, which will run a lot better in a game engine or in, uh, in our film when rendering. So I'll zoom into this, I'll scale it down and I'll rotate it. So we get it quite close to the mesh, as close as you can afford. Well, I've got snapping on already, so I was using it earlier. Okay, so it's uh, nice and close to our mesh and it's doing fine. Let's just add a mirror modifier. That's an obvious one, so you only have to build half of it. So mirror modifier and use the object, which so I can, in the mirror modifier, I don't know whether you know, you can use a mirror, mirror object and use that as our mirror object. Turn clipping on as well into edit mode and let's grab and bring it across. So now we got, we'll link it up like that. So we've got our starting mesh. So I could sort of uh, redo the beret a little bit. Um, would be a good idea. I'll just quickly check the questions. Uh, camera setup and manipulation, maybe. Yeah, that might be a good good one to do. Uh, just having a look at. I want to learn more. Uh, learn modeling like Cinti Studios. Someone, yeah, someone asked me that. It may have been you who was asking about that. Um, so is that the ones with the sort of thin legs and fat bodies, I think? Uh, but yes, um, I'm hoping to do sort of more sort of character modeling tutorials and whole workflow. They're quite long and they're actually, weirdly, they're not as well received as my shorter ones. So um, the motivation to do them sometimes isn't there, which is naughty, really. I need to actually think what's best for the audience, not necessarily what's going to get me the most views. But it's hard sometimes when you're a YouTuber and you're thinking of your income and all this sort of stuff. You get sort of, you manipulate yourself into going down the easy route uh, for more views. Uh, but anyway, uh, good. Yep, you tagged me. Uh, Bluetooth, nice stuff. Uh, drawing displacement, uh, that's an interesting one. I'll go on to that another time. This doesn't seem a good, let, uh, I'll say that it, Blender and displacement doesn't seem great. Uh, the multi-resolution modifier should bake out as displacement. I've never found it that great though. And if you're not using the multi-resolution modifier, there doesn't seem to be an option as far as I remember anyway. Um, uh, I'm pretty used to the old Blender 2.78 uh, 7x shortcuts. Uh, do you think I should stick with them or learn the new ones? Learn the new ones because you're just going to get more and more behind and get more and more frustrated each time there's a new update. And eventually it will it won't be supported. I I imagine that's what happens to software all the time. Uh, it just sort of gets updated. People get frustrated because they've got to learn the new shortcuts and they're fr uh, and it's annoying. But you just have to sort of keep up with the times, especially if you're going to look at tutorials and they're doing different things and suddenly you're thinking, well, what's that button and why is that working that way? Uh, so I would I would really move on uh, and try and get with the new um, shortcuts as well. Some of which can be annoying, <laughs> if I'm honest. I'm still tapping, double tapping A to deselect, where's Alt A. Uh, and sometimes it doesn't work because it, you tap it too hard and all this other thing. Anyway. Uh, uh, would you be willing to test instant messages for retopologization? Retopologizing <laughs> this character. It's for, yeah, uh, instant mesh is good. We could uh, do a bit of that. It's, it can be a bit boring to watch though because sometimes it takes a while for it to uh, remesh and things. I mean, the remesh option on here is quite good as well. And that, oh, there's my mouse, uh, uh, under the um, the sculpt, sculpting menu. And that's uh, getting close to sort of instant mesh quality to a degree. Uh, so we can use that as well. Um, uh, th thanks, uh, Hussein, is it? Uh, Bakar. Uh, yep, loving the tutorials. Thank you very much. Spacements ca maps can be used as bump too. Yes, indeed. Uh, but now I've remembered that first you must create UVs to... Yes, indeed. You've got to unwrap your object first as well. Anyway, back to um, the... Um, uh, what's this called? Retopology. Okay, so we've got our retopology set up. Uh, the next thing we do is we go to a shrink wrap modifier. That sort of, it, it's exactly what it says. It shrink wraps things so they stick to the other objects. So shrink wrap. Uh, and then we say, what's the target for our shrink wrap? And I'll say this model. And it looks like it's disappeared, which is weird because half of it has disappeared. That looks like a glitch, surely. Shouldn't happen. Let's just, oh, they are there. That's very strange. Uh, 
Ah, OK. Uh, <laughs> forgetting what's going on. Uh, then offset, so you bring it above your mesh. That's sort of like uh, 0 0.02, so 2 centimeters yeah, above the mesh. And on surface, you say above surface. So it's always going to stick out above the surface. Uh, and yeah, press that button as well, so it definitely you definitely see it above the surface. Um, and then you can, uh, so the, that's the way I created the beret. Um, so let's just bring that down. So I've got mirror on. And you can just extrude around the mesh. So I'm just pressing E and going around the mesh. I might rotate so just sort of realign it slightly to get the flow of the head. Extrude around here. So you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully this sort of all makes sense. As I go around his head, although his berry is probably going to come down here. It's a bit wobbly, this berry. <laughs> you can see the idea pretty straightforward and just rotate it again. It's very, very rough, this. Um, I'm sure your topology is going to be loads better than mine. Uh, and uh, yep, then the same going up here. E to extrude. Now, the tricky bit with topology sometimes is when you're thinking, well, how often do I add a new loop? Don't worry about it too much because you can easily get rid of them with the dissolve edges tool. And it'll just go around the top. Ugh. I might have done a doubles there because I pressed E and the mouse button in the wrong order. Uh, My mouse feels like it's going a bit weird. Ah, oh, oh, that is because I made a mistake. I didn't turn snapping on. Oh, now. Now it looks like it's all doing really well. But if I just turn off the shrink wrap for a moment, uh, oh, that's rendered. You can see it's all over the place. It's all in the mesh. Uh, so I've done this wrong. So you sh I should have turned snapping on. I forgot to mention that. Snapping two faces. Uh, and it, like I say, it looks like it's working, but my mesh is actually, if I go to wireframe, in fact, that's going to kill my PC if I do that because we'll see this in wireframe. Uh, but remember to uh, turn it face snapping on as well. It's probably why I don't want to do uh, this live. I'm running out of time as well, so I'm conscious of that. The way I can get around that is actually apply this shrink wrap, not in edit mode though, apply that and then add it again. So if you sort of go wrong and your mesh is inside and then it's being shrink wrapped to the outside because that's what the shrink wrap modifier is doing to help you, then you can just reapply it, apply it and then uh, redo it, so shrink wrap. And uh, there it is. So let's use the object. So let's shrink wrap into the object, put it above the surface, um, over here as well, above the surface. And the offset is two millimeters. And we're back. Now, when I go to edit mode, it's actually, uh, well, if, if I turn this off, it's actually in the right place. But can you see it sort of uh, skewed it all and it's not joined up and things because I made that mistake. And now I've got uh, snapping turned on. It should snap to the object now. There we go. Although it should be keeping, ah, there we go. It should be keeping that above. There we go. And you can see it. And that last one, you can see your, can you see how my lines aren't above the mesh? And if I press this last one, adjust, um, was it edit cage to modify results? So that bring the, the cage above there. So we go all the way to the end, need to extrude, then select these two and fill them in. And then uh, we sort of work out uh, where we sort of fill in here. You can't, so you can't really do a grid fill, uh, but you sort of have to work out where they join. And that's where it gets tough is where, um, the flow of polys go and they join into each other. Anyway, uh, let's see what people are saying. <laughs> Your teaching style is awesome. Thank you very much. <clears throat> is the retopo tool ever be good enough for using the shrink wrap? For not using the shrink wrap? Uh, you you combine them. So if I use the polygon tool here, uh, I tend to use this with my pen actually. Uh, so I can just bring it out. In fact, that would have been much easier, wouldn't it, if I'd done that. And can you see I've got my numbers completely wrong here. So I can just go in, uh, back to selection mode, select the edge, select the edge, please. Oi. What's going on there? Selecting both. Oh, that's because I've got that tool on still. Oh, that was weird. Uh, delete and dissolve edges, and then you can just line it up. Oh, what's going on there? It's being weird, isn't it? Let's delete. Oh, look. Uh, something something interesting happened there. Delete dissolve vertices this time. And there's another one there. Delete dissolve vertices. Huh. Don't know what happened there. Something wrong with my polygon tool. And I can fill these in. And you can just press F like that. Yeah. You should be able to. Ah, uh, there's definitely some topology issue here. Select all, Alt M, remove doubles by distance, and none have been removed. There's no problem there. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, very confusing. That should, if I press F there, not do it like a triangle like that. I think there might be some hidden topology. Let's isolate this. 
Let's see what's going on. Maybe it's a normals issue. Mm, fascinating face orientation. No, that's fine. That's a really useful thing, face orientation. So you can see if your normals are the right way around. Red is the wrong way around, but obviously I'm seeing the other side. And if, if you're seeing red, then it might be wrong unless it's pointing inwards. So that should be fine. So something weird's going on with my mesh. It's not a problem because I can just press uh, the two sides here, that one and that one, and press F. Try it there. There we go, F. That's what I wanted to do. And we can go around our shape, filling it in like that. Okay, so that's a basic guide to retopology, which I did promise in the title of this. Did I say topology? I think I said it in the description or something like that. Okay, so auto retopo is good for more basic models and weird for really complex. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the auto retop retopology, uh, that's the biggest thing, the most important thing for the industry is that they can do some sort of automatic retopo uh, that works well. Uh, I know that there's some really good tools out there because when it comes to something like an arm, you're obviously going to want a cylinder around it and sort of cuts, generally speaking, uh, for most uh, most cases. Uh, so uh, that's an obvious one that should be easy to retopo. We haven't really got those tools in Blender. You have to sort of make a cylinder, make sure it's all outside, shrink wrap it, uh, and then apply the shrink wrap, and then you can. It's a bit of a pain, really. Um, but I think Retopo Flow does that, but it costs money, doesn't it? Like Eighty pound or something like that, I think. Um, are you planning on selling this sculptor or just add it to your portfolio? Uh, I wasn't even going to do that, actually. It's just a sort of mess around play. I think there's sort of, I've probably got better models, really. <laughs> but maybe, maybe. Um, uh, sorry, I was, I was reading a few comments and they scrolled down. Uh, hey, Grant, new to Blender here. Uh, hello, Moosehead Productions. Moosehead Productions, interesting one. Uh, how is it automatically wrapping around the object? That is both. Uh, the shrink wrap, where are we? The shrink wrap modifier, that's, uh, so you've got to, th it's, when you shrink wrap food, when you buy food in England and it's shrink wrapped, it's all stuck. So the, the plastic is shrunk around it. It's like they suck the air out and it shrinks down. Hence the shrink wrap modifier, that's what it's doing. So it's sticking to the object. So I pick the object, which is the quad sphere. I ought to rename it to uh, man. So it's saying shrink wrap, always stick to the top of that. And then with these modifiers here, I'm saying always stick but st stick and be slightly above the surface here, so above surface. And then the offset says, how far above the surface do you want it? Hopefully that made sense. Uh, also the snapping tools will help because uh, you can't just use the shrink wrap tool because it's uh, making that happen with a modifier. So if I'm adding lots of topology, that could be anywhere and the modifier is shrink wrapping it too. So at any point I want to turn that modifier off, my topology is gonna be everywhere. But with snapping as well, it's a combination of snapping and the shrink wrap should mesh it nicely around your object. Hopefully <laughs> that's all making sense. Could you tell Naomi to start following your tutorials as well? Naomi, start following my tutorials as well. I don't know who Naomi is, but uh, good luck with that one. <laughs> uh, I can't see how weird things happen and have to fix it. Yeah, um, I'm not sure quite what I did there. I feel like it's when I went to the poly brush tool, which I was talking about, wasn't I? Let's, uh, um, th it's this tool down here is the poly brush tool, isn't it? Is it called the poly? No, it's poly mesh. It's poly build, poly build. And you should be able to, yeah, bring new meshes out. I always go to uh, one away, and then you can fill it in easily. I think there's a, there's a hold down control, and you can do. Why is that not working? Yeah, I obviously need to look into that more. It's something I'm not used to using, so I tend not to use it. But it's got, it's certainly got its place. But I feel like um, I did it the other day, and I was really, really enjoying it, and then. Um, I'm trying it again and it doesn't work the same way it did the other day. I think it's one of those things they have updated really slightly and maybe changed the controls. That could be wrong. Uh, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll work on that for next time. Let's go back to normal mode. Uh, could you, uh, uh, yeah, uh, constantly having weird things happening. Uh, I'm sometimes so lazy that I just use auto quad retop retopology and then just select random edges and just control. Yeah, uh, it's you don't get a good flow that way. I've done that in the past, and if you want to really rush objects and things, yeah, you can you can get away with it. It's not great though. It's not good practice. Uh, hopefully, I've answered why using the shrink wrap there, uh, because snapping is only so far you can go. The shrink wrap does it. it, it combined with the shrink wrap, that does it better. Thank you, CG uh, Monster Tutorials. I have a lovely voice. That's nice of you to say. <laughs> uh, software, 
I have to purposely soften alter my voice because my natural voice is terrible. I, I do actually work on it uh, because I've, I know there's lots of people in India and other places and they might have a different first language. So I really try, uh, I'm doing it at the moment, uh, to not drop my T's, for example, uh, and um, not say um so often. Uh, when you start thinking about it, you start going uh and get all paranoid. But it, it's worth working on it. Uh, uh, Margaret Thatcher, who was uh, a prime minister in England a long time ago, uh, the first female and only female, oh no, Theresa May, uh, first female uh, prime minister, she purposely deepened her voice to uh, have more authority. Uh, so that's uh, an example of people who had to change their voices. Worth doing uh, or worth working on. Uh, uh, Grant model a hyper realistic mech I dare you. Uh, yeah, I do want to do that sometime actually. Um, yeah, uh, interesting challenge. I won't do it anytime soon because I think I need to practice a bit more with certain hard surface techniques. But yeah, I'll, I'll definitely get on to that. Uh, oh yeah, I've got oh, my head's in the way, isn't it? And so I was showing things, wasn't I? And oh no, no, I've done that. <laughs> Why didn't anybody say that before? Yeah, so I'm talking about the shrink wrap tool, which is down here behind my head. Oh, that is annoying. Let's move me over here. Woo. Uh, so yeah, when I'm talking about these things, here's the shrink wrap tool. So sorry, uh, here's the offset just there. And there's the above surface that I kept talking about. So uh, you choose your target, which is the quad sphere, which is the person. And then there's um, the offset. And that's, if I keep doing that up and down, that's how far out it is. And there's the above surface, so you know that it is, so above surface, and that's how far away from the surface it is. So that's the offset, which is um, combined with the above surface. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm frustrated with myself. So I thought before I started, make sure you move your head out the way. <laughs> oh, shame. Um, uh, glad I'm not the only one suffering doing retopo. Yep, it is a struggle, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, thanks for the tip. We'll work on my camera voice for sure. Yeah, it's well worth it. Uh, hi, do you do a tutorial on how to animate a uh, character? Yeah, in my basics of animation, do I talk about... I think I talk about uh, humanoid rigs. I can't remember. It's a while ago since I've done it, actually. Uh, so yeah, on there. And uh, I'll probably do some more in the future. Uh, I, in fact, my Spartan Warrior right at the end talks about easy animating a character using motion capture stuff, mocap files, what are they called? Maximo files and stuff like that. Uh, so you can look at the end of that. I don't think that's changed much, to be honest. Uh, right. Uh, should I put my face over here? I suppose I ought to, really. That makes more sense. I'm just. Uh, does that make more sense? Uh, thumbs up if that makes more sense to you. <laughs> uh, I'm winding down a bit because uh, I'm conscious of the time. Uh, so uh, hopefully everybody's enjoyed this. I'm just answering a few more questions because it's part of the fun, isn't it? Uh, I recommend, yep, so, uh, so that, uh, Grant, uh, when you do podcasts with CG Matter, Default Cube, ask him about his automatic camera placement settings. It moves when the mouse moves under the webcam. Um, is that the case, or is it? Is he doing live streams, or is that he's edited like, edited, edited it like that? Uh, see, that's why I need to work on my voice. <laughs> I'll ask him, though. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, cars are very difficult and it's hard to get reference images of them. Oh, I think there's quite, there's some really good references of cars, isn't there? I think most studios, or is it actually? No, it's not cars. Yeah, no, I think you're right, actually. <laughs> Just making that up in my head. I was actually thinking of Star Wars. There's loads of things to be loads of reference images, good reference images of Star Wars vehicles and things, yeah. Uh, blueprints, yeah, type in blueprints. I think that's the, uh, that's the key, uh, rather than reference images, yeah, blueprints. Uh, I have an issue where whenever I start a new project, let's say making a car, I stop in the middle of the production. <clears throat> so I keep thinking of the outcome will be terrible. I'm not sure it's a common thing. No, it's a really common thing. I did it just today. Um, I was working on, in fact, I will show you, show you what I've been working on. It's such fun, isn't it? Um, it's, it's nice having an audience. So I can say, look what I've been doing. Uh, <laughs> right, let's save this quickly. Do I need to save this? Actually, no, I don't because uh, that was just a test. Okay, uh, so let's open recent at the Sempires Stone. Is this the one I was doing? Don't say. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is the um, this is the work I've been doing at the Sempires, uh, and let's. 
I'm in the I'm in painting mode, so I'll just come out of that and go to layout mode. There we go. And I'll turn the overlays. Do I need to turn my overlays off? And I was really struggling. I think it looks okay now, but I wasn't happy. It's tough because it's a modular approach. So I'm doing all these sort of modular pieces. And do you notice how they don't really sit quite together? It just, it was frustrating me. And I did these rocks several times over. They're really simplistic rocks and I wanted it to look simple, but I kept sort of overdoing it. Ah, oh, it was annoying. Uh, and I thought, is this ever gonna look okay? Are they gonna sack me at this late stage in the Atlas Empires team and all this sort of thing? And then you just keep working on it. You keep uh, keep looking at reference images and think, well, what have they done differently? Why does theirs look okay? And sometimes you look at it and you think, actually, it doesn't look okay. And then you start thinking, actually, mine's not as bad as I thought uh, because they've got the same problems. But when you've been staring at it for ages, you really get paranoid. Uh, but also, um, then you suddenly think, oh, yeah, they've done that little bit like this or that little bit like that. So um, you see I'm dropping my T's on little, a little bit. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, Hopefully you just keep working on it, like uh, sculpting as well as like that. You just keep working on it and working on it, looking at your reference images uh, and practicing uh, whilst you're working on it. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, uh, you should get a green screen, but I've actually got a green screen. It's over there. Can you see it? There we go. But because it's in front of the door and the setup, uh, it's just a bit of a pain if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice. I keep meaning to set up my studio, um, but I haven't got around to it yet. Uh, that's something I will will do soon, though, uh, because I'm quite enjoying the live streams and I want to get it looking good. Uh, be a be professional, Grant. I have got this sort of tendency to just go for these things. Just do it. Uh, it's worked well so far. Oh, excuse me. And the community is quite um, forgiving, which is nice. So I always test things out on you guys. I hope, hope you don't mind. Um, right. Uh, yeah, I, it's good to have the face cam. I, I noticed that when I'm doing this sort of thing and then it's up here and it's pointing down here and here's my face, uh, aren't I beautiful, that sort of thing. It's because I want people to recognise me when I'm on the street, waiting for someone to actually recognise me from my channel. <laughs> it hasn't happened. Actually, I think there was a student who said they were a subscriber and they recognised me from YouTube. Uh, that was that was a, a breakthrough moment for me. Oh, actually famous in the real world, honestly. Uh, but put moss between the rocks, yes, but because they're modular, if I put rocks between one area of one rock, it's going to appear on all of them. And so they have to be modular. Uh, but yes, I, I was thinking about that, maybe in these areas around here. Maybe, actually, maybe put some rock, mox, uh, moss, m moss in between, yeah. Uh, and make breaks, it gives you some fresh, yes, definitely take breaks, I like doing that. And get a little bit of exercise when you take your breaks. I like to go and either have a cup of tea or do a few weights because that uh, makes me breathe. And that breathe, uh, that that oxygen, that breathe, <laughs> that breath, oxygen goes to your brain. Uh, it does make a difference. Uh, so a tiny bit of exercise doesn't have to be loads. Uh, try if you not even, I would say press ups, sit ups, anything, or just squats, jump up and down. Uh, it brings. Uh, they, they used to say you should do that with your students in schools and high schools. And suddenly they get that sort of uh, fresh air into them, uh, and it helps them to work. But it just sent my students crazy, so <laughs> didn't do it again. Um, uh, too bad you don't know how to produce a basic Unity project start to finish. Do you mean it's in terms of uh, maybe that's something I could do? Um, I'm happy enough to do the the very basics in Unity, like uh, an environment and make it look nice. But when it comes to programming, uh, that's that's where I finish, unfortunately. And I, I want to spend some time learning programming, getting used to it, but it's time uh, a bit too much on at the moment. Uh, but we'll we'll see how we go. Uh, any paid big paid workshops at some point? Um, I don't know anybody else who does paid work blender workshops. It's something I've been thinking about doing is sort of getting a class of students and going through and doing a workshop. If you're interested, then let me know. You can always email me or contact me on the Discord server. If I get enough interest, then it's certainly something I'll do. Um, I'm, I was half thinking of doing this as a workshop thing, but with so many people, I think it could be tough and you can't really spend enough time on the individuals. You'd probably do it like a class of, let's say five to 10, and then sort of, uh, you can help them a bit more. Uh, hello from India, uh, Kumar. Uh, I probably got to go soon, but any other questions? Any tips for new Blender users? Yes, start low poly. Always start low poly, build up. It's good fun. You produce things that um, uh, look okay to start with, and then you just slowly, slowly, increase your skills and do the blender exercises, do my uh, courses and playlists and stuff. <laughs> um, 
I understand cam cams for live stream streams, but I don't understand it for video uploads uh, that others do uh, not really needed. Uh, than I personally think. Oh uh, yeah, um, this is a really, old, I think this camera is probably 10 years old, so it's uh, not got anything decent about it. So I'm not even sure a green screen, whether it could pick up the, the color information very well. <laughs> I used to, I knew a teacher who used to press up and down with a student and got into a lot of trouble, oh dear. That's not so good, is it? Um, <laughs> uh, yes, host any pro tips for us new Blender users? Um, pro tips for blender users i don't think i think that's actually a bad idea to think pro uh think simple unless i've misunderstood um you should do a meetup in your town i don't think there'd be many people here actually uh what kind of, i've had loads of mic problems actually someone's asking uh, uh who's asking about uh, a stent is asking about my microphone this is not the suit most suitable mic for doing this uh, you should be using a cardio cardioid condenser microphone but i've this is a shotgun microphone but I cannot get the cardioid condenser microphones to work with my system. I do not know what it is. Uh, I'm hoping to get a new computer soon and maybe that will solve things. Uh, anyway, uh, what is your aim for Polygon for human character for video game? Um, I haven't decided, do you mean sort of genre character? I always go fantasy. I love the fantasy characters and that's what I'm interested in. So I'd probably go that direction really. Um, thank you very much, Crossover. Learned a lot from this man. Uh, please do a local blender meetup. <laughs> I think that would work. There is a London one, uh, London one coming up actually. Uh, I'll advertise it. I'll put a video out uh, reminding people. So uh, I have, uh, I probably will go to the London one and probably do a, a, a live sculpting thing is what I've said to them. But um, there's, there's a really good job opportunity in Barbados that I'm, uh, is coming up and I, they haven't set a specific time and I really want to do that one. Uh, it's a teaching uh, blender to people in Barbados. So uh, I don't know whether that will come to anything, but we shall see. I'm really hoping it does because I want to go to Barbados, never been there. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's a good idea, Sebastian B. Yeah, that's what I should be doing. Opening a panel on the bottom and then just put my face in it. Yeah, like a, it could be any panel, couldn't it? And just don't use it. Ah, that's obvious. Why did I not think of that? Thank you, Sebastian. I will try and remember that for next time. If you use a green screen, then please wear a green shirt so you can... <laughs> floating head, definitely. That's a, that's a must, isn't it? Um, uh, thank you, Owen. Uh, I'm glad that your friend is uh, finding my videos useful. Great stream, Grant. Thank you. Yep. Uh, I think... Uh, I think... Cool. Five hours away from Cornwall. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, it... it so um, hopefully I'll be in London at the Blender Meetup in London. I'll put an advert out for them uh, so you can all uh, get tickets to there. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I think, yep, that is uh, an hour and a half. That's a, probably good. Is it an hour and a half? It is an hour and a half. Pre almost precisely. Look at that. I know what I'm seeing. It's that teacher brain. And I'm, I'm listening out for the bell at the moment. <laughs> Uh, my tutorials are better than uh, paid lessons that I've tried so far. Uh, a few people have said that, so I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad people are getting the most out of them. Uh, that's brilliant. Uh, yeah, I, Scooter's Workbench, I think it is something to do with my power source of the microphone. Uh, I have got phantom power turned on. I need it for this mic as well, but it, it doesn't seem to need the same amount in this mic, so not sure what's going on there. Anyway, uh, <laughs> almost precisely. Did I, did I say that? <laughs> Almost precisely <laughs> is a good phrase. Almost precisely. Um, anyway, uh, thank you all very much for joining me. It's been good fun. So we've had about sort of 120 or so uh, people join us and 106 likes. That's nice to see. Uh, it's lucky they don't do a dislike thing with this section. <laughs> uh, yeah, so thanks for joining me. Uh, let me know. Uh, you can comment in the description as well uh, to say uh, what, um, what direction you want things to go in and, uh, and any ideas that you have. Um, I didn't really go over uh, retopology very well there, so maybe you want to see more of that. I'd like to get onto the painting though, that's the fun bit. Uh, so maybe a longer stream, perhaps next week. Um, I'm thinking Friday's a good day, but um, I have to figure that, figure that out a bit. <laughs> Naomi will start following your tutorials soon. Well, uh, I look forward to meeting Naomi. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks everybody. Uh, it's uh, really enjoyable. Oh, hello, Top Channel 101. Uh, nice to see you here. <laughs> Uh, just, about, just as I'm leaving. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you all. And um, painting will be good, yeah. 
Excellent. <laughs> I'm trying to say goodbye. Uh, but yes, thank you all. And I will hopefully see you next time and uh, happy blending in between then and now and then. See you soon.